Welcome to this video. Um, in the previous video, we uh, had an introduction to the ARM assembly uh, programming. Uh, we went over basic information on the directives and we covered different uh, sections of an ARM uh, assembly program. We talked about directives, we talked about um, making comments, single line comments, multi line comments, uh, and we talked about labels. Uh, in this video, we'll talk a little bit more about the directives themselves. Um, I would like to say that uh, the directives uh, that I'll go over here uh, are not everything that uh, is there in the ARM assembly program, um, but probably some of the most common ones that you will encounter if you are uh, uh, getting into this uh, programming, uh, uh, assembly programming. So. Uh, before I even uh, go ahead and, and start with the uh, with this video uh, in details, what I would like to do is I would like to show you where I get some of this information from, so that if you need to look up more information yourself, you can do so. And uh, what I can do is, uh, here we go, let's say, um, let's go back, let me share this screen with you. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Was the... Here we go. So basically, if uh, actually if you look up uh, new uh, the GNU uh, assembler manual, uh, you will have a few links that take you into more details on different directives in the assembler, and some of them even have examples. Um, this first link uh, shows you the details in an HTML kind of format, so you can take a look at different uh, directives here. Um, if you remember in the previous example or previous video, we did use the ASCII, for instance. So this tells you what the ASCII directive does. Um, in this video, we'll go over multiple, you know, a, a few uh, a few more. And as you see, there is really, like if you click on the assembler directives, there is just a lot. There's, there's just so many of them. There is no way that we can cover everything here, but now you know where to go for more details. Um, you can also visit the other, there's another link um, uh, that's presents, that presents the uh, directive information in a PDF format. So again, this will tell you, um, uh, you know, we'll give you more information about it. So if I look up again, the, the ASCII here, um, there's an example uh, that's using the ASCII directive. Anyway, so let's go back to our code. Um, so let me go back here. Okay. So uh, in this code, this is the program that we had previously. Uh, what I did here is just moved it. So let me just move the memory tab back to where it was. Uh, it was somewhere here. So the memory was here. It was one of these tabs on the bottom. But what I'd like to do is I actually like to open it and set it aside so I can look at the content of memory as I'm looking at the program. And I have the register set here as well. So uh, this was the video that we started with. Uh, we said the data directive basically uh, is used to store variables and initiate variables in the data section of memory. The dot text is where your code goes. Uh, the dot global will make uh, the symbol that comes afterward visible everywhere in the program. And we talked a little bit about labels. Um, so what I would like to talk about here is basically uh, what other directives do I have that I can use to store data in memory? So let's start with the simple ones. Uh, let's say I want to store a byte, a value in memory. Uh, let's say I want to store the value of 32 in memory. So how do I put it there? Well, I can use the dot byte directive and that will tell the assembler to store this value of 32 in memory using one byte. Okay, um, so let me compile and download this to the to the board and you will see what I'm talking about. So if I look at the memory, it looks like my uh, data, which is uh, 32, is residing right here. 32 in decimal is basically 20 in hex. Um, so, um, but let's say I want to store a much larger value um, in memory. 
So as you know, a byte is 8 bits, and the biggest value, the largest value that 8 bits can save is 255. So the question is, what if I want to store a value that is more than 255? So if I do uh, a byte and I have to, or if I want to store like just random big value 2309, I will not be able to do so. So I need something bigger than a byte. Um, and I can save this as a half word. So this will uh, basically use two bytes to store the value. Uh, I can also use a word to store, uh, again, some random value uh, uh, in memory. And the first the first directive, again, will tell the assembler to compile. I shouldn't really say it, compile. I will take this value and assemble it into a hex value that's stored in memory using one byte. The next one is going to use two bytes to store this value, and then the last one is going to use four bytes to store that value. So let's download this into onto the board and see what happens. Okay, so my 32, my value 32 is residing right here, and then the half word is occupying two bytes, which are right here. Um, let me switch this to a word. So now this is my, this is my byte right here. Um, two zero basically is a byte, right? It's uh, uh, eight bits, and then followed by uh, zero five or zero nine zero five. If you take a look, at, if you convert the value two thousand three hundred and nine from decimal to uh, hex, you will get uh, nine hundred and five. And because I'm using half a word, half a word is two bytes, and this number is occupying two bytes right here. And then the last one, uh, the last value is 2,391. And that will uh, add up to, uh, convert to 2,391 in uh, decimal is uh, 957 in uh, hex. Um, so this is the, the most significant digit of the 900, and this is my 57. Um, now, this, in this example, you probably can't really see that the last one is taking a, a whole word. Um, so we will do more examples later, but I want to focus on different directives right now to store values. So that's all good. Um, we can so store values in memory, but the question is how we can access them once we have them in the program. So let's say in my program, I do need to refer to the byte and the word that I stored previously. So how do I do that? Well, I can. I need to point to them. But uh, one way to do that is I can... Problem is that I need to remember where this data is actually residing in memory. So imagine that I need to load this, uh, uh, this value or this value from the memory into one of my registers. So one way to do that is I need to move the address of that byte, which we say is residing at address 20. So I'm going to move that address into a pointer, which is going to be a register in, in this case, uh, immediate value uh, 20 hex. And then I'm going to load a byte from that register into R1. Uh, again, don't worry too much about how what, what these instructions are doing. This is not the point here. I just want to show you that in order for you to load the data from memory into a register, you need to go to that address and grab the data and put it into a register. Now, obviously, this is not very not very good practice. So if I run this one step here, I see that my register R0 contains 20. I do another click, and now I grab that byte and I put it into R1. Um, we say that 32 in decimal equals to two zero in hex, and here is my two zero, okay, in this register. Um, this is not a good practice because I won't be able, like what if I have a lot of declarations here that are back to back and I'm not sure which address the the data starts at or, or, or ends at. So a better way to do this is actually to give these uh, labels. So here I can do, uh, let's just call this BTY for byte. Right, and then you can call these whatever else you want. Um, uh, HWD for word, um, and this is WD for also for word. So now I don't have to worry about remembering the address when I program. Instead, I can simply just point to them, and I can use this instruction. I'm going to make R0 
point to the label BTY, and then I'm going to move a byte from that pointer into R, let's say R2, so you can see it changing on the right hand side, um, like that. So now, by doing this, I alleviated the need of having to remember the address where the data is being stored. So that's the point from this exercise. It's not about really crunching these instructions. I just want to show you that you can add a label to do that. So here we go. If I execute that, here's my 20 that's being stored in R2. Um, so uh, let's keep going. So, so far you'll learn that if you want to declare space for different variables, you have different directives. In this case, we use the byte, half word and a word. And these directives will compile the values into uh, using a byte, two bytes and four bytes respectively. Uh, there is a, uh, a few other uh, directives, uh, the half word, for example, and the, the dot short are they both, so that short here, um, they both occupy, well, allow the assembler to save the value using two bytes. So short and half word are equivalent. Um, what else I can tell you? Uh, word and long are, are equivalent. So word and long are equivalent. So if you type long or a word in both scenarios, you will get a four byte space allocated for this value. Um, what else can I say here? Well, we can we can move on to something else uh, before uh, uh, we run out of time. So, uh, if I want to declare, uh, let's say I want to declare actually an array of values. How do I do that? Well, you can simply just add a comma and then you can declare the next value next to it, like that. So now this is an array of uh, three in three integers uh, and so on. Right, I'm going to remove the half word here, and I'm going to have an array of words. So this is, uh, let's say 90, let's say one and two, just hypothetically, right? So let me compile and download this. Okay, so if you examine the memory here, you will see that I have an array of four values, each value is taking a byte, occupying one byte of space. Um, uh, so 32 is 20, this is the 20 right here, followed by 45, 45 in decimal is 2D in hex, followed by 90 in decimal, which is 5A in hex, followed by 12 in decimal, which is 0C in hex. After that, we have an array of uh, words, so each of these values is going to occupy four spaces or four addresses in memory because each address holds one byte. So the value of 2391 uh, 2, um, translates into 957, and you see that this 957 is actually occupying the entire block here. So it's occupying one, two, three, four bytes in memory. Uh, followed by 90, 90 is 5A. You see 5A also is occupying the entire uh, four byte space, followed by one, this is my one right here, and my two. So let me uh, show you, uh, before we wrap up, let me show you something uh, cool to do here. So let's say I have a pointer that is pointing to this uh, uh, data. So this is pointing to the first element in this array. Uh, then in the next instruction, it is loading the next, uh, this loading a value from that address and it's putting it into R2. So let me show you a cool short loop. So let's call, let's do a loop here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a byte. I'm going to increment that by one, and then I'm going to branch back to my loop. I'm going to do this a couple of times. Uh, just to show you, like, you know, you can still do something cool even though you only learn just a little bit of information on assembly. So basically we have a loop that's go uh, that is going to get the first byte, the second byte, third byte, and fourth byte. Fourth byte. Uh, there is no conditions to terminate, so obviously if I keep loading, it's going to go into the next 
space in memory which is going to start loading bytes from these words which is not what we're looking for but anyway uh, i just wanted to to show you like how this works since we haven't covered all that much we can still do something fun so let's step through it so i executed the first the first instruction r0 is pointing to this pty to this label which essentially is pointing to the address of the first element which is the address of 32 now I'm going to load a byte from that address and I'm going to put that into R2. So if I step through it, now a byte from that location, which has a value of 32, is stored into R2. So if I look at R2, I see the value 20, which is the hex equivalent of 32 decimal. Now this instruction is going to branch back to my label, which is loop. So I'm going to branch back to this. Um, I'm pointing to the arrow. Oh, so now actually I'm, I'm pointing, I'm going to keep loading uh, the same information because I should have moved this loop one instruction down. So there we go. Because every time I loop back is going to point to the uh, first uh, element of that array, even if I increment the pointer by one byte or by one, uh, it's still going to point back to the first element over and over again. Okay, so let's try it one more time. So uh, I have a pointer uh, pointing to PTY, loading a byte. I increment the pointer by one. I branch back to loop. Now the pointer should be pointing to the next uh, element in the in the array. I move to the next one. I, I load it into the register. So here we go. This is my 2D, which is, um, where did that go? So right here. So first I loaded the 20 from memory into the register and then I loaded the 2D into the register. On the next iteration, I should be loading 5A. So if I keep an eye on this register, register R2, I should see 5A. Here we go, that's 5A right there. And then one more time to load the final value, which is 0C, which is right here. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll resume in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later.